This video is going to be on the drift velocity of an electron, or in other words, we want to know how fast an electron travels through a wire, in particular a copper wire, and at the end of this video, um, talk more about why that makes the most sense, but we have some wire, and it's a conductor, so let's call it a copper wire, and I'll draw it here, so here's a wire, this is sort of close up of a wire, right, so got that there. And the wire is going to have some charges that are flowing through it, so I'll draw them as blue because electrons are always blue. For some reason, they always are. So we've got some charges, and those charges are traveling with some velocity that we want to find, and I'll call that velocity V sub D for the drift velocity of the electron. So I'll write that out as V sub D is going to be the drift velocity so if you get confused with any of the units here I'll just I'll write them out on the side so you don't uh, so you can look back and refer to them later so there those are our charges right traveling through the the wire and I'm gonna say that each of those electrons has a charge of Q lowercase Q is gonna be the charge of one electron and as those electrons travel through this wire we're going to say that they travel over a fixed distance that I'm going to call D. So that's the distance that the electrons are going to travel over. So D is our distance, right? And so there's a couple things that we need to look at, a couple different equations if we want to find how fast the electron is traveling. So the first thing would be what's the equation for velocity? Now, our equation for velocity we know, which I'll just label it as V sub D again, is uh, distance over time. So rather than write delta every time, I'm just going to use uh, normal normal variables. So our, our drift velocity is going to be our distance over time. So the distance we can rewrite as drift velocity times time. Right, so that's all we have so far. So the next thing we want to look at is, well, this wire is a three-dimensional wire. So getting into higher stages of physics, you're going to look at more things that are in three dimensions. So we should consider that if this wire is three-dimensional, then we need to consider its volume. So before we do that, we'll look at the cross-sectional area of the wire, which is going to be a circle, right? If you, if you look at a wire and you look at it head-on, you'll see that there's a... a circular cross-section, so we'll, we'll call that cross-sectional area A. So, if we wanted to, because we know already that our distance is V times T, if we wanted to find the volume of the wire, well, the volume is going to be the area times that, the cross-sectional area times this distance. So our volume, which I won't call V, I'll write VOL here for volume is going to be our area, A, times our distance, which is V sub D times T. So now we have an equation for volume. The next thing we want to look at is going to be what I'll call number density, um, and, and different professors will, will call it different things, but number density is basically going to be the number of charges per unit volume, and I'm going to label that as N star. Right, so n star is going to be area and volume, you know, but I'll write n star here is going to be number density. Number density is going to be the number of charges per unit volume. So I'll write that as big N. So our big N is going to be number of charges. per unit volume. So, if we wanted to find the number of charges, big N, we could rewrite that as N equals N star times volume. And we have an equation for volume, so we'll sub that in. And we'll say that our number of charges is going to be equal to N star times volume, which is A V sub D times t. So now we have an equation for number of charges, right? 
And our end goal, you'll see, is going to be to find an equation for the drift velocity, but we will write it in terms of um, current. And current, so you know from from uh, high school physics, is, is ch change in charge per unit time. So I'll write that as Q over T, right? And so we have an equation for number of charges. We have an equation for current and we know time so let's try to find an, uh, an expression for Q now Q is going to be equal to the number of charges if we wanted to find the, the the amount of charges we would want the number of charges times the charge of one electron and we said that small Q lowercase Q is going to be the charge of one electron and we have an expression for n so big Q is going to be n times small q, the charge of one electron. That's how you would find the amount of charge in this given distance, in this given area here that we're, we're uh, referring to. So if q, big Q, is big N times q, well, we can sub in N, and we can say q is going to be equal to N star A V sub D T times q. So this is becoming a rather long expression, but we're almost done. So we know here that current, we just said, is the amount of charge per unit time. So let's write this as current and just divide both sides by time here. So we'll go, we'll move up here, and we'll say that if I is Q over T, then we'll take this expression, put it over time, take this expression and put it over time. So we'll say N star A B sub D T small q and we're going to put that all over time so now you can see at this point time cancels out here and we have an expression for current and that equals n star a v sub d times q now our goal was to figure out how fast an electron travels in a copper wire right so we want to solve for v sub d so we rearrange a little bit and we find that v sub d is equal to i over n star a q. So now we have an expression for drift velocity of an electron. And what's interesting about this is that if you plug in typical numbers for current, number density, area, and the charge of an electron, you'll find what you'll find is that the drift velocity of an electron comes out to be about one inch for 22 seconds. That's incredibly, incredibly slow for something like an electron, which we always think of as this small, fast-moving particle, and it is most of the time. And in fact, when it's not, when there isn't a current flowing through a wire, electrons do move that fast. But once you put, once you apply a current to a wire, to any conductor, electrons actually move very slowly through them. It's something called the pea shooter model which I'll draw right here so if this is your wire this is your wire a little more zoomed out than over here something called the pea shooter model so here are your electrons you could think of it as you had a straw and you put a bunch of peas in them and you would shoot them at people like spitballs or something so what happens is electrons move very slowly and as one electron moves through this side, they sort of just move slowly and just drop out of the other side. They don't actually move very fast. So why in your house, when you flip a switch, your lights go on seemingly instantaneously, right, at the speed of light? And that's because what moves quickly through, what moves that quickly through the wire is not the electrons, but actually the field, the electric field, which is created once charges start moving. So the thing that's moving that quickly actually isn't the electrons, it's actually the electromagnetic field. And that took a very, very long time for physicists to understand and really um, figure out and, uh, and uh, sort of solidify. So what's actually moving that fast is not the electrons, but actually the electric field.